I'm gonna really rush through the first few steps because I'm pretty sure you're not here to watch me paint basic contrast paints and base paints. You're probably here for the rust, the blood, the gore, all the disgusting nastiness that is the death cup. But I need to do a few steps first before I can paint the whole model. So I got Contrast Black Templar and with that I'm going to paint these tank tracks. And Warbuck Bronze for all the armor trim and these edges. And then finally Militarm Green and I'm using this to differentiate different Plague Wars scrollers from each other. This contrast paint is nice and green and so for this one I'll do the dozer blade and maybe these panels on the side and then for another one I'll do the top or just the mortar part just to set them apart and have different plate burst claws. I don't like to have an army where everything is just painted the exact same. So we're almost done with all the base layers and it's time to get to the rust but first a little bit of paint chipping. See these are very nice complete panels of green uh, set off against the white. But you can make them look a little bit rougher if you just get a little sponge and some white and just stipple on a little bit of white paint here and there. It'll make the paint look chipped and it doesn't, might not work that great on this one, but I got another one over here. See here I painted these green bands and the edges, of course, they will start to chip and wear and they will get a little bit of chipping like this. That way you don't even have to draw very straight lines as you paint these green uh, areas on the tank. You just draw a squiggly line, it's fine, and then you sort of chip it like this. And when the white is dry and after griming it up, you won't even see the color difference between the base layer, the primer that I sprayed, and the white paint that I'm using now. It'll all just look the same. Now, if you've got any touch-ups to do, now is the time. And you don't really need to touch up a lot, but take a look at a few things. So the bronze over here, the Warlock bronze, you want to make sure that's covering properly, especially here on the dozer blade. This is going to be a focal point of the mini, and you want to make sure this looks good. So over here, I got some white on that. I need to paint over that with warp block bronze first. The black of the tank threads, I hit here, these wheels, that doesn't matter. That's all going to be covered with very rough rust, so you're not going to see it. Same thing over here, I hit this part here with the contrast black templar. That's fine. It's going to be covered with mud and dirt anyway, so nobody's going to see it. But you want to make sure the warp block bronze is good and all covered up neatly. Time for the actual streaking grime. So what I got here is a cup 50-50 streaking grime and white spirits and I'm going to wash the whole model with this and I'm gonna be very rough go all over it and I'm gonna water it down if I think it's too much. See this is too dark for me so I got another cup over here with some white spirits and I'm just gonna wash this down a little bit. I just want a very light layer of streaking grime everywhere because then I can be, after that, I can be more precise with where I want my streaks, where I want my dirt, where I want my rust, of course. But if I get a nice thin layer, like here, this looks good, then that's a nice base for everything. And make sure you cover everything, make sure there's no white standing out, because after this, anything that's still left white is going to stand out like a sore thumb. And it's just gonna pop from a very long distance away and you could leave it but you would have to cover it up with some rust later on and just to be safe I work with it. But the reason that I'm using this cardboard sort of cover here is that this wash is going to get very dirty and it's going to drip down much more than if you would use an acrylic wash. So I just want to protect my cutting mat a little bit because it's getting worse and worse and this way I can just slather on the wash and don't care too much about what it hits. Time for the fun part. I'm going to start with a layer of typhus corrosion everywhere that I want to have this rust. And it's important to use typhus corrosion because the encrusted rust deposits that I'm going to use later, they need a little bit of rough surface to look really good. Otherwise they look a bit bland. So I've got a big large base brush here from Gabe's Workshop and first I'm going to just put this type of corrosion everywhere here around the part of the wheels. These change, everything will get a layer of type of corrosion and I'm not trying to be neat here. It's fine if it gets on other parts uh, because it will just look like dirt and grime and yeah, we'll get to dirt and grime later, blue rust first, but it will just be part of the model. Now that's easy. You can do all of this with the space brush. Then let's see where else you can put some rust. So. With Death Guard, it's really nice. They have these pre-made pop marks, for example. And here's a, like a scar, there's more damage over there. And so I'm taking the brush and I'm just stippling on some rust over here. And you can use a brush like this. I'm using this one because it's really old and worn. And so it's stuff sticking out. So you get these nice rust splatter. You can also use a little sponge. And I'm sure you've seen sponging videos before. You can just take a little bit of kitchen sponge, 
rip a piece off and use that to stipple on rust wherever you like. Uh, you need to be a little bit smart about this. So these pop marks, that's one. Another one is where plates of metal meet. So over here, this would be a good place for some rust. Now this brush is way too big for that. So I'm gonna get a normal brush and I'm just gonna start with a little bit of typhus corrosion here underneath because that's where these plates might rub together. They expand, they contract and they start to wear on each other and you get some rust formation over there. And just a little layer of types corrosion like this will be a good base to start with. Another one over here, this is a good place for some rust as well. Don't go around all plates, accentuating all of them and not everywhere, but just a little bit here and there is a good base layer to start with. Now I'm gonna work on all of this uh, model and after that I'll show you the results before moving on to the next paint. So you get a good idea of what you can do with this type of corrosion. So let's quickly go over the tank and see where I put the typhus corrosion. So, uh, first of all, the barrel. That needs to be properly corroded and then all these wheels over here. I've made them very corroded as well because I like the idea that it's so rusted it might even be rusted shut. But still it's working in some weird nurgly magic way. Then of course the front, anywhere where there were pox and marks, all of this here is all rusted through. The bottom I didn't do much and then over here this is all rusted as well. And got a good base layer to work with. So what I'm going to use now is heavy crusted rust deposits and after the heavy comes the medium and the light and we keep going back and forth a little bit of typhus corrosion a little bit of this and that because rust comes in layers like an ogre and so I'm taking some heavy crusted rust deposit water it down a lot with some white spirits and then just go over all of the typhus corrosion patches. This will give it a little bit more of a reddish color and I do water it down quite a lot because I want this to be more subtle than if you would just slap it on like straight from the pot. If you do it straight from the pot, it gets really, really red and it will look like um, the Eiffel Tower or you know, one of those bits of artwork that they put on a roundabout that is just instantly corroded and the corrosion actually helps to protect the iron. Well, that's what you get if you just take this straight from the pot. And that's not really what I'm looking for. I want something that looks damaged and corroded, not something that is supposed to get corroded and protect the metal underneath. This tank needs to look sick by itself. I want my vehicles to look just as sick as the pox walkers that walk among them. So I'll go over all of the patches now and I'll show you the results after. So let's take a look at the dark crusted rust deposits. And uh, here is a good example of what I'm trying to achieve. You can clearly see that the type's corrosion is still the outline of this blotch and the dark rust is over there. Little spill over here, that's fine. Here on the front, on the dozer blade, you can see the same thing. I left the type's corrosion around the heavy uh, crusted rust deposit because that way, sorry, the dark crusted rust deposit, because that way you have a nice outline of how far the rust has spread. And I want to make it lighter and lighter the more to the center of the rust spot you go. So you get the impression that the rust is expanding from the center. It's growing. It's more organic than actual rust. I want to, like I said, make this tank look like it's sick. So next up is the medium rust deposit. And this one is really, really bright. So I'd really recommend getting some white spirits, diluting this significantly when using it. And so the goal here is again to get just a little bit of the rust and start applying it in spots on to the dark crusted rust deposits. This way you get these blotches that are growing and are spreading and it will start to look more sickly and nasty. This whole part here, I'm just gonna use quite a lot. And again, just using this brush, little white spirits and getting some of these rust deposits everywhere. This will dry extremely bright. Don't get too alarmed after you've seen this dry. We'll fix it all later. Let's just do this first. Now, if you work the way I work, you get these blotches on the tank, as you can see here. And there's too clear a separation between the medium and the dark rust deposits. So what you need to do is you get a little cup of white spirits and you start feathering the edges. That's the beauty of working with these enamel paints is that you can reactivate them with white spirits and then you can work with them however you like. And I'll show you here, let's take this piece over there. So I load my brush up with some white spirits and I start feathering around the edges. And I just keep going until the edge is no longer so perfect a circle. And keep going around the model over here. Let's feather these edges a little bit as well. 
and the white spirits will activate not only the medium rust deposit but also the dark one that's underneath it and so it'll start to blend a little bit and if you keep going like this all around the model you'll have nicely feathered edges and then it's time to move on to the next layer of rust after dark crusted rust deposits medium rust deposit comes light rust deposits yeah i know life is full of surprises however i'm going to treat this a little bit different i've got a smaller brush here more white spirits and i'm going to wash a little bit around the edges of all these rust patches because i still want to have a little bit of a rust glow onto the white base or green in this panel and this will show that the rust is spread a little bit outside of the sort of darker patches but it's not really fully set there yet and just go around the whole model with this and give it a little bit of yeah, a, a rim a stroke around the the patches and I will make it look like it's growing, but it's not there yet. So let's take a look what I've done so far, because I'm getting to a stage where some parts of the rust are great and I want to continue or leave it like that, but I want to continue working on other parts of the rust that aren't looking that good yet. But first, I want to show you this, and I hope this is well visible on the camera, but you can see a little yellow outline around the rust spot. And that was what I was trying to achieve with this last pass, getting a little rust onto the white of the armor. So this I'm quite happy with. I'm also quite happy with these blotches of rust. This is really what I'm looking for. So dark outer parts of these patches and then where the pock marks are, that are already part of the model, that's where it's lighter. So it looks like the rust is coming from there. Now here, these I'm not so happy with. They're too yellow and it's too sort of monotonous. It, it is a bit mixed, but over here, I'm just gonna start with some of the dark crusted rust deposits again and start adding some more dark color in there. And if that's not enough, then I'll use the Typhus Corrosion as well and just add in more texture and then keep going. Like I said, layer after layer after layer. It takes time with these paints, but you get fantastic results. Now over here, there's a little bit too much of a blotch of rust that is clearly put there with a lot of liquid, right? It's not edgy enough. It's not growing organically. The same happens over here. That's normal if you work with a lot of white spirits with these enamel paints, they sort of sort of ooze out from where you put your brush, kind of like a contrast paint or kind of like a wash. And it has this sort of effect, like a pooling effect. And you can just get some white spirits and then start pushing that in. I'll show you that in a minute. Over here, I'm quite happy. These are nice little pock marks. This is all looking fine. So this side I'm quite happy with, the front I'm quite happy with. Over here, this I'm quite happy with. It's just here on the top, the part that you see the most when you have the mini on the table, that I'm not so happy with. So over here, let's start with that. Or actually, let's start with this part here, because I have a clean brush now. And I can just take some white spirits and I'll put it on there, reactivate, and then I push with my brush into the spot of rust. And that way I can push the rust in there and get a more edgy look. Let's get a piece of paper here. So I can clean my brush, get some white spirits, and I'll show you again on this piece over here. Maybe this is more visible. So the edge is too liquid. It looks too much like a liquid pushed it in there. So I'm just taking the white spirits, it reactivates the paint, and then I push the brush into it. And I will make a more jagged and less rounded edge of that rust spot. And this is not good for your brushes, by the way. This way of handling your brushes, it will fray your brushes, it will wear them out very quickly but for me it's worth it i'm happy to go buy a new brush after i finished three of these tanks and have a great rust result rather than leaving it as it is and having these weird looking rust patches now everywhere where i think these patches look too round i just add a little bit of white spirit and i sort of feather out the edges a bit more or i push them in a bit more so that the rust looks less like a wet pool over there so let me show you these plots over here. So the dark crusted rust deposit, I just take a little bit and with a small brush, I'm just gonna drop little bits over there. And so this is how you get those rounded edges. That's fine for now. I'm gonna clean my brush. I'm gonna take some new rust and I'm gonna start drawing some squiggles. So I'm just gonna take the rust and draw on where I want the rust to sort of expand to. And that way you get less rounded blots and it'll look more organic. So here we have some nice pock marks in the tank. So that I want to keep light, but this over here is too light for me. So I'm just gonna stipple on a little bit of the dark red rust. And over here as well, 
That way, with the darker spots around it, the lighter spot will light up a bit more and it will look even more diseased and more worn because of the dark spots around it. And so keep going around the tank. The good thing with these enamel paints is that you can keep going and going and going and you can use white spirits to reactivate it, wash it off, feather the edges or make them look rougher. It's all possible and you can just keep going again and again. And really with rust, it's fine if you add layer after layer after layer because it just adds more texture to the rust patch. It's not like the acrylic paints that uh, sort of make a plastic layer on top of the mini and obscure detail. In fact, the rougher it looks, the better it looks with rust. So just keep going. Time for the fifth enamel paint. And this one is Rust Streaks, again by AK Interactive. And this is a dark brown rust that is very liquid because you're meant to make streaks with it, not just drop it onto the model. So here I got the cap open and I'm gonna take a little bit. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna find places where rust would be streaking down. So let's say over here, we got a patch that is rusted. You can imagine some rust coming from here and streaking down and you try to make these little rust streaks. Now this one looks nice because it's nice and thin and tapered to the end. Let's do another one over here. That one doesn't look so good. So how do you clean that up? You clean your brush first, wash it out with white spirits and you do the same as I did with the light uh, yellow patches of rust. You try to feather out this tip and you do that by sort of drawing next to it and now it has become a nice rust streak. Might not be so visible on that dark part. So let's look for a nice white patch over here. So let's say I want some rust streak coming from this screw going down. I take too much of the enamel and I just draw a straight line, way too thick. As you can see, this is not how rust streaks. So clean your brush, get some white spirits, clean your brush. Now white spirits on the brush and you're just gonna draw from the side down like this and there you go now you have a nice pointy rust streak that looks great that looks really natural and so i'm going along the model everywhere with this brown rust and it's also a good way again to darken the rust if you want slightly darker looking rust in places you can just use this rust wash or the rust streaks in the same way that you use the crusted rust deposits but i use it just to get these rust streaks here and there Almost every nut or bolt on this tank will have some rust in it. Like I said in the beginning, where plates of metal come together, they start to work and they start to wear and tear. And so you get these rust streaks coming down. This first, after this, I'm going to make the tank bleed rust. But let's go through the tank with this first. Now, to make the rust look more organic, I'm going to make it look in the same way that a pus boil would look if it popped and the pus came leaking out. Stuff you see on your pox walkers and your marines and so on. I want to recreate this on the tanks and all the other vehicles, but with rust. So I'm going back to my light crusted rust deposits, the super bright orange one, and I'm gonna look for these pock marks on the tank. And over here, you got a couple that are perfect for this example. There's a couple more over here, so I'll do those as well. So you get me to see paint both of those. So I take some of this light crusted rust deposit and I load up my brush quite heavily. And I'm going to do more or less the same as I just did with the rust streaks, but I'm gonna start in this pock mark over there and over there. And then I'm just gonna drag it down and I'm going to really make it ooze out and then collect here on this ridge of the plate. So that's what I'm going to work on. This one is going to ooze out a little bit. This one is going to ooze out a lot. And same over there. So again, I'll take some of these rust deposits, load up the brush quite well, and then fill the gap here as well. And this one over there. And then drag it out as if it's leaking out of that boil, out of that hole in the tank. Now, these, I'm just gonna make them streaky. So again, just as with the rust streaks, this one over here, you can clearly see it's too thick. It's not tapering off. It's just a yellow line at the moment. So I'm taking some white spirits. I'm gonna make sure that I taper it off so that the, there's a sharp point at the bottom, but it's oozing out of that pop mark. So clean up your brush, take some white spirits, go to the other side, try to wipe some off, make it streaky like that. So now you got a nice streak coming down. This one also still needs some work, so a bit more white spirits, not too much. And form a point on this streak, like that. Go left, right, there we go. Now it looks like it's oozing out. Then over here, 
I want to make sure that it looks like it has been oozing for a while. So it's collecting all over here. And then it is oozing over this as well. Now it's very wet. There's lots of white spirits in there. So I'm going to leave this to dry. And then I'm going to sort of draw little lines down here. Make it look like it's overflowing over here in the corner. And I'm just going to put a little drop down there. And a little drop over here. Let it leak. Well, let's leak it onto the chains. That might be a little bit cool. So it will drip down along these chains over there and sort of go all the way down like this along the side of the chain. Of course, some on this chain mail that the tank has because why would you not dress up your tank in chain mail? And over here, these streaks, they're drying up a little already. So I'm taking some white spirits. This will show you how you can reactivate this paint. White, so great to work with. So some white spirits, and again, I'm going to start sharpening this point by going from the sides like that. Looks good. Now this one, again, like that. And I'll go all over the tank. Everywhere where these holes in the tank, I'm going to add this drop and draw streaks and try to form these sort of pools that collect on armor ridges to make it look like it has been leaking quite recently. And Maybe I should just make a video for each of these enamel paints individually. If you would like that, leave a comment below. If there are other enamel paints that you would like me to use and explain how to get good effects, comment below and I'll start making videos for you. Okay, I went all around the tank, but I wanted to show you a little something. So we're back here. Like I said, when I was painting this, it was too wet, too much white spirits and I couldn't really work with it. But now I can show you how it works when you push your brush into the paint. So this is loaded with some white spirits and I'm just going to start pushing like this and I will push the paint down. I clean off the brush whenever I leave the screen here, and I will leave the view of the camera. That way you can sort of sculpt this paint however you like. And this is a great way because you can be like me and not have a great first result and then keep working on it and get a better and better and better result until you're happy with it. And if you remove too much, you just can come back in with the same enamel paint and put it back. So now we got a nice streak here. So I'm collecting over there and then streaking down and I'm going to add some more streaks over here to make it clear that it's spilling over from there and that it's spilling over from this corner over here. And then again, white spirits to push this in towards the chain like that. Yeah. Now it looks like it's spilling from these two pop marks onto here and then spills over all along this chain. And here you had some normal streaks and I went all over the tank. So now you can see, for example, the front is really visible. There's these bright orange pock marks everywhere and they're all leaking and oozing rust. Now there's one more rust that I want to use and that is a light rust wash. And this light rust wash is going to be used over here under these two brass ridges. And why I want light rust wash there is to just make the transition between the two parts not so glaringly obvious. See, I didn't paint any rust, nothing in there. There's not much streaking grime in there. And so it's a bit too obvious that, that over here it's too clean. So I'm just taking this light rust wash and water it down a bit and then apply it pretty much everywhere around the base of this piece. Because like I said, two different pieces of metal meet and they start to work, expand, contract again and again and again. That will lead to rust over there. So I'm just taking some rust wash it will seep into the recesses and it will be barely visible, but you know, I'll know it will be there. Done with the rust, at least for now. Maybe while I'm working on it, I'll see some more places that need more or less rust and I'll work on it. But I'm going to start with the grime and the nastiness that is coming out of the mortar first. So here what I have is some Astrogrand debris and some Caliban green. And this you can mix together and the texture paste will take on the color of the paint. These sort of basic materials that Games Workshop sells, they're basically just an acrylic medium and they absorb the acrylic paint really well. And Astro Granite Debris is gray and I want to mix this gray with some of this darker green to get a sort of desaturated but still fairly dark green mix. And then take some of that and start applying it to the tank. Now, you can't make mistakes with this. There's no fixing this. You do it once, you do it right, or otherwise you're stuck with a weird looking tank. So I'm gonna first add some to the barrel because I need to show that this dirt, this disgusting goo is coming out of the barrel and that it's seeping down like this. 
and then onto the tank over here. So I'm just gonna make a nice little edge with this stuff and have some of it sort of roll down from there and draw some streaks like this and sort of make sort of squiggly lines make it look organic make it look like it could grow as it lands on the tank it starts looking for stuff to corrupt and to turn and so keep going like this and you can keep mixing more and more of this but i'm gonna add again a couple of layers of different colors here so i'm starting with this it's the darkest it's a bit sort of sea green because of the gray mixing with the caliban green and then i'm gonna move on to brighter colors and layer them on top and the brighter paint will be mood green again with the astro granite debris and so make a nice mix this will be way way brighter but it will desaturate very quickly due to the gray in the astro granite debris so mix it until you get the color that you like and then start applying it i want it to be pretty greenish like that it's fine if some of the astro granite debris is still gray and if there's still some bright green spots in there as well it just adds to the variety so we're going to layer this on top again same places same idea I need to come out of the barrel onto the tank and streaking down you can put a little glob over here let's say something fell out landed here onto this gun and from there it is seeping down as well now get over here you can go as wild as you like with this. You can add colors, you can make it all, all purple as well. If you want sort of purple instead of green grime, you can just mix in purple paint in the Astro Granite debris. You can make it orange, you can make it yellow, you can do with it what you like. And also I wanted to say, you don't need to use Astro Granite debris. There are these acrylic mediums that you can just buy from Liquitex. I think it's called lava or crackle paste or something like that. You can buy a whole jar of that and mix in whatever paint you like. And that lava paste that comes uh, without color. So it takes on a lot color a lot better than this Astro Granite debris because this will stay gray. But for this purpose, that's actually what I like. I want to have this look old, like this has been here for a while and then we layer on some fresher stuff and fresher stuff and just make it look as nasty as possible. And now for the final layer of these crusted grime, I'm going to use some AK Plague Ground. This is a pot that is working the exact same as this sort of mix, but it is this bright green. It's absolutely disgusting and it's perfect for this purpose. If you have a Death Guard army, I highly recommend getting a jar of this stuff because it's a lot. You see how big this is, 100 milliliters. You can do all your bases with this easily. And so I'm going to use this quite sparingly. I don't want too much of this super bright green here, but again, I'm doing the same thing. Just get a little layer on there, get some of the highlights with this brighter green, because it will look more natural if it's sort of on top. So here, this little splotch there. Maybe this is the part that is actually growing out of the grime that was deposited here by the mortar. And start drawing again some squiggles going down. Like it's streaking down it was leaking oozing and now it's drying up and it is getting crusty and dry and some more around the barrel here let's get this more dirty and grimy and let's draw some squiggles with this stuff like this and yeah be creative add as much as you like add different colors now this needs to dry i'm gonna let this dry for a long time maybe overnight before it's time for a wash and some algae streaks because why not? So now that the pastes are dry and nice and crunchy, it's time to add some more weathering to that. And for that, I have Slimy Grime Dark from AK Interactive. And this is great for getting sort of fungus growth on your vehicles and other objects. And so I'll take a small brush and I start doing the same as I did with the rust streaks. So. I'm just first going to fill up some gaps and pieces and sort of draw an outline around this sort of gunk that's on there. And I'm going to use a little bit of it as a wash over the brightest parts, just to give it a little bit more texture. These bright parts otherwise look a bit too flat. But then what I do is I add a little bit, let's say over here, and I try to draw streaks out of it. I want this to look like it's the oldest layer it's sort of coming from underneath all the gunk that's already on there and so draw some nice long streaks with it and as before just work with it as much as you like or as little as you like let me show you my other tank so i got the other plague burst crawler already finished here 
let's get that in view. So this one has way more green and nastiness than this one. And this second one now is a lot brighter still than the first one. And after I wash this, it will start to look more like the one on the left here. But I still want to have variety. I want to have some looking dirtier than the others, some looking rustier than the others. And like this, you get some more different looking vehicles in your army. So I'll just keep going, uh, washing, adding streaks. And you can also, of course, add some of this green stuff to the sides of the tank if you want. You want to have show that there's moss growing on the sides. You can use it for that too, but I'm going to stick to this sort of little focal point here on the tank around the barrel of the mortar because that's where I want the attention to be drawn. And then the final step for all the slime and grime is of course a little bit of Nurgle's Rot. This is a technical paint from Games Workshop and it dries up glossy so it will stay looking wet. And I'm going to add just little bits and pieces of it over here to just give a little bit of a hint of wetness to this slime. And it will be a nice extra layer again, giving it a little bit more interest here, and making it look like some of it is dry, some of it's still wet. Let's have some dripping here out of the barrel as well. And I'll add a little bits and pieces of this to all my miniatures as well, my regular marines, terminators, and so on and so forth. So you get this little element of slime that binds them all together and sort of makes it all, turns it all into a one sort of yeah, working together army. Rust is done, grime is done, time to weather the bronze and I want to have it very heavily oxidized. Again shows wear and tear, shows age but also it gives you a very nice additional color on your miniatures. If everything is this brown and a little bit of green it's a bit boring so let's make this super bright and I am using first of all Nighthaunt Gloom. This is a technical paint by Games Workshop and it has a strange, I don't know, strange ability to dry up and become almost invisible. I don't know if that is just what it's supposed to do or if the paint is just a bit crappy. But it works for weathering, especially this sort of bronze, because you get a, well, a very light blue layer on it. And it's not so bright as Nihilac Oxide, and it's a good base layer to start with. I'm spending a bit more time on these plate burst crawlers because no, there are three very focal points of my army and I don't really see myself playing without Plague Burst Crawlers anytime soon. So I better spend a little bit of extra time. If this were a Poxwalker with a little brass or bronze uh, icon on his belt, I would just use Warblock Bronze and then Nihilac Oxide. Because why spend so much time on Poxwalkers? But for these big vehicles, I go the distance and get a couple of layers of different uh, material on there to make it look more interesting. And then some Nihilac Oxide. And again, watered down. It's tricky to work with. It easily gets way too bright and it easily pulls very quickly in the recesses. So take your time, uh, water it down a lot and then just try to get a little layer on it. Just like I did before with the Nighthorn glue. Now the tracks of course need to be in line with the basing that I use for my Marines and so on. So <laughs> here's a picture of my Typhus. And the way I made that base is that I started with some Armageddon dust and then washed it with a few washes. So I'm going to do the same with these tracks and I'm going to add this sort of dirt and grime all over where it might fall off the track. So <clears throat> take a look at the tank. So the track goes like that when the tank moves forward. So it pulls up the dirt here and then from here it falls down into this sort of mechanism. So it makes sense to add, have a lot of dirt over here and a little less at the back and then have it fall down like so onto this mechanism so that you get lumps of the dirt into this mechanism and make it look even more worn and dirty. And I'll put a little layer of this all around, uh, but especially up here and there. And then I'm going to dry brush some more to get the same effect on the rest of the tank. So now a bit of dry brushing. And I'm just quickly working here on the bottom of the tank just to make all of this sort of in line with the rest of the basic material. And just giving it all a quick dry brush will make it all look a little bit dusty. And you can go a bit further with this if you want. You don't have to just stay around these tracks. You can do these cogs and just make it all look a bit dusty. And then a quick wash with some speaking grime to give the, the material a little bit more depth, give it a little bit of shading, but also to make it a bit darker. Because as you can see here, without the shade, it starts to blend in with the rest of the vehicle. It's too beige. It's too much like the other parts of the vehicle. And so I want to make sure that it's quite a lot darker and it also looks a bit more wet. 
You know, the mud on these tracks, they only really sticks there if the mud is really, really wet. If you want to go look at some footage from tank shows, they often do this in the summer because then the soil is dry. And you don't see these big clumps of mud stuck to the tracks. But this is Death Guard. They're fighting in nasty soil, of course. If it's not nasty, they'll make it nasty. And that sticks to these tracks. And that's more wet and yeah, not so dry soil. So the streaking grime will give you that effect. And then I'm going to add some more washes to it, but you have to wait for the streaking grime to be completely dry. Because using white spirits means that all the other paints, the acrylic paints, will be kind of, uh, what do you call it, hydrophobe? Well, not hydrophobe, but it won't like to be next to the white spirit. So I guess white spiritophobe. And uh, it will try to stay away from it. And so you get weird pooling if you don't have this completely dry before switching to your acrylic uh, washes. So I would leave this to dry overnight even it's a bit long but hey, if you do a couple of these vehicles at the same time now is a good time to maybe go to bed and get some sleep and then i'm going to work with two washes at the same time i've got reikland flesh shade that i use to wash all of the earth with so also the parts that are spilling down here between the track and the tank and a little bit here around these mechanisms over here and all of it will get a wash of reikland flesh shade contrast black tampler here little stipples everywhere just to give it a little bit more interest and i should be using non-oil here but while recording i found out i don't have non-oil anymore apparently i either emptied the pot or i lost it i, I have no clue where it is so contrast paint it is but you should be using uh, non-oil here because it seeps more into the recesses and it mixes better with the rest of the paint uh, with the wash the right one especially and like this you're going to get a little bit more interest in your miniature and if the black seeps into the recesses and it mixes a little bit with the right one flesh shade then let it dry and we'll move on to the next step we're using a product called puddles from ak interactive and this is meant to make puddles on dioramas or on your bases but it's basically just something that dries glossy and it has a little bit of color in there which makes it look dirty a little brown in there uh, you could do something similar with uh, high gloss varnish like art coat and mix in some colors it's basically the same as those paints that people use for lenses well that, that i use for lenses on my minis and gems on this uh, shadows keeper from custodes uh, it's high gloss it has some color in it and that way you get some nice effects like here you can see already i made this wet with the puddles and it will dry this glossy and it will make the mud look like it's still wet and it's clinging on to the tracks because it's wet it's not dried up yet and it will be a great contrast against the dryness of the rust you know we have the rust over here we have this grime over here that's kind of wet you can even use some puddles over here as well to make this even more shiny and make it more wet let's let's add a little bit more here and then you have this great contrast going on in your mini and contrast is not just about colors it's not just about bright and dark it's not just about uh, colors that uh, complement each other's it's also about the textures, having a dry, dusty texture like rust and then having some wet, sloppy textures like mud or grime. And blood, of course. We'll, we'll get to blood, don't worry. It's called fog of gore for a reason. There's gonna be gore, I guarantee you. Now for the final touch on these tank threads, I'm gonna add some grass and flowers uh, because the bases that I have are very colorful. I like to have this contrast, again, contrast between a vibrant, uh, very nice living bases and then the nastiness of box walkers and death guard marines on top of it. And I of course need to have some of that on the tank threads as well because these tanks drive through the same terrain. So here I have Swamp 4mm and Orange Flowers from Gamers Grass. Let me get them in front of the camera so you can actually see them. And I've also got over here Purple Flowers. And I'm not sure if I'm using these because there's already a lot of this color in the tank. And I think the bright orange is going to look better together with the grass. But these clumps are too big. I want to tear them apart a little bit. So I'm just going to take a small clump of this grass. And with the hobby knife I'm going to start cutting it in smaller pieces. And uh, it doesn't matter if it gets damaged and starts sticking out all the wrong ways. This is grass that the tank has driven over and then plowed up with that, uh, the tank thread. So it's supposed to look a bit wonky and worn and sticking out to all sides. Now, gluing that down always with a little bit of super glue because by now the sticker that's at the bottom that is actually supposed to make this stick to your bases, it's done. So I'm just going to add a little bit of super glue wherever I want this and then jam in that piece of grass to get it stuck right there so it looks like this barrier over there that is stopping the tank track 
is catching these clumps of grass as well. Let's put one over here. Make it look as if it's fallen down here off the tank tread onto the side. And just keep going like this all over your mini or well, all over the tank treads, wherever you want to have a little, little detail, a little something sticking out. And so these grass tufts, they're not very visible, but the flowers definitely will be. So let's take a small flower over here and I'm gonna treat it the same way. Cut it into small pieces and really small pieces because this is going to stand out. So just cut it again in fours. And let's do on this side the same as we did on that side. On this side, we'll add a little tuft of flowers like that. And it'll look nasty, it'll look broken. And that's exactly what I want. I want the death card to show that they are destroying their environment. They are not the most environmentally friendly army. Although they do promote growth, I guess. It's a different kind of nature that they enjoy. But yeah, I don't think uh, Greta would approve of the death card. So we get to some blood and gore and I'm going to use some uh, zombie thirst or zombie gore from the Toothing Coats line from uh, Duncan Rhodes. And I'm just going to find a few spots here on this dozer blade and make it look like he shuffled out of the way a few things other than just dirt and rubble. Uh, so we need some here on the edge, of course, and then a little blood spatter going up. Why not? And I also like to pick out my skulls with this in my Death Guard army. You know, almost every Warhammer army has a skull in there. Lots of units just carry them on their belts or some skull symbols. And so if you have this skull symbol or actual skulls all throughout your army, you can paint them all in the exact same way and get a sort of unifying element. But the problem is if you just paint them like bony color, they're not going to stand out. You could instead make them bright red or bright green or something different. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a streak of blood to every skull. So I just take this dry brush that I have and every skull from the front, I just go once over it down like that. And if I do this on every skull, on every model, I'll have this sort of marked skull everywhere, hanging off belts, on trophy racks, so on and so forth. It's a nice unifying element. Uh, you could do it like this, you could also paint it or dry brush it with some black to make it sort of charcoal. Or go for half black, half white, like a Mechanica symbol, but nasty with actual skulls. All of these are good options, but this way you get a bit more of a unifying element across all different minis that you have. And yeah, or, you know, let me waffle on and go do it your own way. That's what this channel is for. Inspiration, do it how you like though. And that's the Plague Burst Crawler all finished. And I know the guns are missing. I'm going to add those later, but I'm running out of time here to record this video because I need to take a little break from recording. I'm going to be busy with other stuff. And sadly, this isn't my full-time job yet. Who knows, maybe in the future. But I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I showed you all kinds of different ways to first grime up the tank and then good, fun rust that is actually pretty easy to do because the paints do most of the work. There's not much technique involved. It's all just using these paints the right way and let them flow and let them do their job. And then the tracks, making these dirty, it's always fun to add. And of course, a little bit of blood and gore. Every mini needs a little bit of blood and gore. I'm gonna be working on the rest of my Death Guard army. I've got pox walkers. I'm gonna paint actual 60 pox walkers, Death Shroud Terminators, couple of characters, and then maybe at the end, there's gonna be Mortarion and I think I'll do a video on him as well. So subscribe if you want to see more cool Death Guard models and you want to see my army grow. And maybe check out this video as well. 